Um, I grew up in Highland, Illinois. It is a small, small farm town in Southern Illinois. Um, I went to Highland High School and my high school was, because it was so small, we had mostly core classes and we had a few elective classes that we could take um, some Spanish, but none of them were actually in science fields. So I had to decide that I wanted to do science more in college. I, I did knew, know that I wanted to do something in the science field. I knew that medical laboratory science existed because of a project that one of my elementary school teachers made us do. She said that you had to pick a career based on something you were interested in. You couldn't be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher. You couldn't be anything that anyone has heard of already. You had to find a new career out there. And so I knew I will look I like science and I needed something that I could do with my hands. I was a very hands-on person. So when I Googled it, I actually came across medical lab science as a career profession. Could, yes, work in a medical lab, a clinical medical lab. Uh, they would be what we would consider as a non-registered technologist. And that would be, um, they could do similar tasks as a registered technologist, Yes, there is so much you can do with an MLS degree. Um, I know that in my class, we had about four go on to med school, one go on to PA school, someone went to dental school. I chose to go straight into being a medical laboratory scientist. And then even in the medical lab scientist clinical field, you have specialists and coordinators, supervisors, you have other leadership positions within the hospital. Or you could go and do um, industry work and you could work for other medical technology companies and help design the instrumentation that we use in our laboratories. So there is a plethora of jobs available for someone with an MLS degree. thought that I would like to become a physician when I went into college. And then the more, more schooling that I did, I kind of felt that medical lab science was what I wanted to do ultimately. So I dropped the pre-med side of my studies. was at the University of Kentucky Hospital and it is a huge laboratory. So I got to tour every single laboratory department, including your core laboratory, microbiology, surgical pathology. I got to do some genomic work. It was an amazing experience. I got to see all aspects of the laboratory before I decided what lab department was gonna be my home. A uh, core laboratory is a laboratory where hematology, urinalysis, chemistry testing is performed. So a lot of those blood collection tubes that you get when you go to the physician go to a core laboratory to get immediate testing. They are challenging, but they're not impossible. If you study and if this is something that you want to do, you can definitely achieve it. Um, it's not going to be a walk in the park. You're not going to be able to party throughout college. You're actually going to have to study, but it's worth it in the end, in my opinion. I really do love my job and I get to continue learning all the time. Yes, um, after my general education in college, so we did two years of just uh, core education. Then we got into our medical lab specific classes and the class that I utilize most of my, obviously microbiology class because I work in microbiology. So the things I learned in that class, I use every day. I know some people say a degree is just a piece of paper, but it is not in terms of if you're going to into the medical lab field. The best part of my job is the people that I work with. I really love all of my coworkers. We just work together so amazingly. And then also the job that you're doing is so important every single day. If I 
everything I do when I come in is impacting someone directly, a patient directly. So having important work and amazing team to do it with is what I love about my job. Yeah, in a big medical center, like where I'm at, um, we do around the clock work. So Monday through Sunday and all hours of the day, unlike a physician's office where you may only work nine to five Monday through Friday. It is flexible depending on what laboratory you go to, you'll have different hours, but the volume in a large medical center is much higher, but you're also learning so much more. I, the things that our teachers would say you would only see in the textbook, we actually see here. The worst part about working in a hospital laboratory is people don't choose when they get sick. So you may have to be here on Christmas, you may have to be here on New Year's, but the work that you're doing is so important, it's just not something that can happen nine to five. If you're someone that likes hands-on, you like to find answers to things, medical lab science is for you. They have been fantastic in providing these opportunities. They have continuing education, which I'm utilizing now to get my master's degree. Um, a lot of large hospital systems can offer continuing education and tuition reimbursement. Um, they also promote internally so that I have had opportunities to go from a bench tech to a specialist to a supervisor where I'm at now. A bench technologist is someone who does the laboratory testing, analyzes it, and then reports it out to the physician. Yes, I am registered with the ASCP, which is the American Society for Clinical Pathology, and I have my medical laboratory science certification. I love the technology in our laboratory. It's fantastic. So in my uh, student experience, to identify an organism, we used to have to make a broth solution of it put it in about 30 little cupules, incubate it for 24 hours overnight, and then we would get an identification the next day. Automation on our laboratory, I can put that bacteria on a target and have an identification within 30 minutes. So it's very cutting edge in the laboratory field, some of um, the technology that we use, but it doesn't eliminate the need for the medical laboratory scientists because there still needs to be someone to put that bacteria on the target or to analyze and read the samples. Technolo one of the technologies in our laboratory is called the Keystra Total Lab Automation. So we have a sample, we log it into the instrument, place it onto the instrument. The robot actually picks up the tube, realizes what kind of test it is and sends us the media that we need to incubate this um, specimen on. And so it plates it, it streaks it out onto a pattern where we can identify bacteria, and then it sends the plates down a conveyor belt into these six huge incubators where the plates sit and the organisms grow up on. Then it takes pictures of those plates at certain cadences, and our technologists are able to look at a computer screen and read the plate without ever touching it. If it's a negative, they can say that the culture has not grown any um, pathogens, and they'll send it to waste. And if it's positive and they need to do work on the plate and identify the organisms, then they can call it to their station and it moves down a conveyor belt and pops out right at their station to do work. Yeah, whenever COVID hit, we had zero ways of identifying it and about uh, like three to 4,000 people requesting testing for an organism that we had no idea how to identify. So within the year, they had developed seven different laboratory tests and we have to validate those. They take a lot of people power to do those things. So 
our entire laboratory shifted from diagnosing um, pneumonias and urinary tract infections to our main priority was now developing a test to identify this virus. And so um, it did have a huge impact on our laboratory. And now we have a separate laboratory that does primarily uh, COVID testing and other infectious disease testing. So the quality assurance program in our laboratory just makes sure that every result that we're putting out, we know is an accurate result. So we use QA metrics like doing blind samples and unknowns to QC plates and reagents that we know. So say our indole reaction is supposed to be positive for E. coli, we will run a known E. coli strain on the indole to make sure that it is working properly. Yes, so depending on what laboratory department you're working in, your job description will be a little different. In the core laboratory, my primary responsibilities were logging in samples and then running them on the analyzers and doing quality control on the analyzers to make sure that the results we were putting out to the physicians were accurate. In a microbiology laboratory, my main priority would be coming in in the morning and reading the plates that were set up from the night before identifying what's a pathogen worth which um, what's a pathogen versus what is normal flora and then doing antibiotic susceptibility testing so I can tell the physician this drug will not work for this for this bug or this drug will work to kill this bug so I did this a little different. I did cap inspections were my neat moment. I really enjoy going to different laboratories and seeing how different laboratories operate. That's part of my job as being a supervisor is I go on these inspections to make sure that other laboratories are keeping up with the same standards as our laboratory and every other laboratory throughout the United States. The coolest things I saw was in my clinical rotation. So what you referred to as an internship, um, I was in the surgical pathology department and there was a patient who they could not go to the bathroom themselves because their nerves did not connect to that um, part of their body to let them know that they had to go to the bathroom. So what the surgeon did was cut sections and send them to the lab. And we were looking at them on frozen tissue blocks until we saw the indication that there was nerve. And then they attached it to the proper body part and then they were able to use the restroom like normal. It was amazing. That's when I was like obsessed with science. Yeah, so the part of the microbiology lab that I am trained in, part of it is mycobacteriology. So I deal with um, mycobacteria such as mycobacterium tuberculosis. And every identification that we get as mycobacterium tuberculosis, we must call to the physician. This is an infectious disease, and it has a lot of implications for the staff that have been working with this patient and the patient themselves. So um, we have a pretty good relationship with our infectious disease doctors because we are calling them anytime we identify any kind of mycobacteria before we can rule it out as mycobacterium tuberculosis. And then as far as nurses go, we rely on them to give us the good samples. They do a lot of the sample collection for us. So we work hand in hand with our nurses to call them and let them know that the sputum that they collected um, was not a good collection. Try having them expectorate instead this time. And usually that solves it. Um, but yeah, we rely heavily on our nurses for good sample collection. And then whenever we also have other critical results to um, relay that message to the physicians. 